It's been roughly six or seven weeks since the wonderful news of an effective coronavirus vaccine. And it seemed to come from nowhere, lifting the mood and the spirit of at least this nation, if not the nations. The Independent in Ireland said, even the dogs in the street probably know, given the pep in the step of their owners, that we have found at least one vaccine that works against COVID-19. Pfizer and Biotech described it as a great day for science and humanity, as hope dawned. The hope of this pandemic finally coming to an end. The hope of life as we once knew it. The return of simple pleasures like hugs and congregational singing, sharing hospitality and the freedom to go wherever we like, whether it be the cinema or that long awaited cruise to the Caribbean. Hope has dawned for hospitals and residential homes alike. And of course, we now know that the first COVID vaccinations have taken place, with Mick Newell working at the Salford Royal Infirmary saying, it's unbelievable. There are people who have been shielding at home since February. This offers them some hope. They can finally see some light at the end of the tunnel. No vaccine has gone from the drawing board to being proven highly effective in such a short period of time. This vaccine has taken only 10 months to follow the same steps that normally span 10 years. And we must give thanks to God for the development of this and other vaccines, with at least some believing that it has only been possible thanks to the prayers of God's people and the supernatural intervention of God. Who am I to argue with that? But with this positivity and very real hope in mind, are we placing too much expectation in a vaccine? And do we still need a savior? Now, whilst the vaccine will certainly help us, we need to hear those who remind us that the precise effectiveness of the vaccine may change, that it will take time to roll out, and the end of this battle is still months away. We do not know if the vaccine stops spreading the virus or from just developing symptoms, if it works equally well in high-risk elderly people. We still need to maintain some social distancing, testing, and quarantine to keep outbreaks under control. And surely we must remember, even cherish, the many lessons learned during this pandemic. Lessons that concern our common life together and our relationship with the Almighty God. But most importantly of all, whilst this or another vaccine may well save us from many things, it cannot and will not achieve what only the true and lasting saviour has, the hope of life eternal. Our first reading, taken from Genesis 3, sets the scene. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, became conscious of their wrongdoing and hid from the Lord as sin took hold of them and all humanity since. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have rebelled or turned away from the example and instruction of God to go our own way rather than his. And the consequences of that disobedience is certain and eternal death. Sadly, no vaccine can save us from this very real condition. But there is hope. Hope thanks to the grace and abounding love of God for all his creation, including you and me. Because the Father sent his Son to not only lie in a manger, but to die on a rugged cross and to rise from the empty grave to offer every one of us forgiveness, redemption, 
and relationship with him, as well as the promise of eternal life in all its fullness. That's why the angels were so overjoyed before the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, because in the town of David, a saviour had been born. Hallelujah. It is in and through this son that God rescues all humankind from its predicament of sin and mortality. Titus 3, verses 3 to 5 says, At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. Ephesians 2 verses 3 to 7 says similar things. We were by nature deserving of wrath, writes Paul, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace we have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages we might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. If you fail to be convinced by your need for the Saviour, then just take another look at John chapter 4, also read this evening concerning a Samaritan woman. Her life was transformed by Jesus, and her testimony compelled others to go and listen to him. Many Samaritans believed because of her words, but many more believed when they heard Jesus for themselves. And they declared, this man really is the saviour of the world. There's a certain irony in my view that whilst we celebrate the arrival of this incredibly welcome vaccine, that we perhaps consider it to be the only saviour available to us and therefore miss our continued need for the most important saviour of all time, the one who forgives our wrongdoing the one who walks with us daily through the rough and the smooth, the one who leads us to streams of living water, the dwelling place of God where there is no mourning, crying or pain as the old order of things passes away. Please don't miss him this Christmas. Don't live without him. Don't turn away from the saviour who really matters, but rather come to him. Know him for yourself. Discover that he really is the saviour of the world and the one in whom we can all have hope forevermore. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your love constantly shown to us and the breakthrough of this and other COVID-19 vaccines. We thank you for the hope you have awakened in the world, for the light at the end of a very long tunnel. But we thank you for the gift of our Saviour Jesus tonight and recognize our need for him more than any other. So turn our hearts and our lives towards him this Christmas time. Forgive us our sins and bring us to that place of eternal hope, the dwelling place of your glorious presence, we pray. 
in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen.